Hello, it is so good to be back with you um, this evening. My name is Michelle Riley, and um, I am the owner of Notaries for Alabama and Alabama Notary and Process Server. Um, I train notaries here in the state of Alabama, and I also run my own mobile notary and process serving company. I wanted to check in with you this evening because there's a lot going on notary-wise in Alabama right now, and um, I figured now's the best time as any um, to update some of you on things that I'm hearing and seeing and experiencing and um, hopefully get a conversation going. The first thing I'd like to cover is somewhat of a timely topic. It is um, absentee voting in Alabama. Uh, Alabama is a little unique. There are a handful of states that allow for uh, voters to vote from home or um, vote through the mail. And what's unique about Alabama is voters have to get permission to mail in their ballots. I want to clarify um, the notary's role in that process because it's changed over time just a little bit. If you follow the news, I'm sure you've heard a lot of comments or um, interviews and news stories about absentee voting. And so absentee voting is allowed the voters do need to request an application from their absentee election manager. Um, this information is on the Alabama Secretary of State's website. I will post a link um, below in the comment section or the other section, you know, the section I'm talking about. Um, that does not involve the notary, the requesting the application, and it should not. Um, however, once the voter does get the application form and has filled it out, um, they might need someone to witness their signature. And the only time someone's signature is needed on the application is if the signer is unable to apply their regular um, legal signature. So if they're having some problems, health issues, and uh, let's say maybe a broken arm um, or maybe Parkinson's or some other neurological problem and they can't sign their name, then they can sign using their mark, an X, a line, um, a circle, and a witness then would have to um, watch the mark being made and then in the designated spot, sign their name, the witness's name, and print the witness's um, name, not title. So that's the application. Um, after that gets turned in to the absentee election manager's office, um, once reviewed and approved, the voter will receive their ballot and three other envelopes. On one of those envelopes is printed an affidavit. It's called Alabama's absentee affidavit. Is that correct? Yes. Alabama absentee affidavit. That's another form that must be completed by the voter. And after it's been completed, their signature will need to be either notarized by a notary or witnessed by two individuals who are at least age 18. 
I'm mentioning all that because a new law was passed less than a month ago, reinforcing the role of the notary and others in the absentee voting process. And I'm bringing this up to you, Alabama notaries, because it is imperative that you make yourself aware of the new law, formerly known as Senate Bill 1. Now that it has been signed into law, help me out. It is Act Number 2024-33. Boy, I hope I got that right. Um, read it through. There are um, major problems for anyone who um, does not follow the strict guidelines for absentee voting. And I am concerned that well meaning well-intentioned notaries wanting to assist voters to complete the absentee ballot could wind up breaking the law. So please, please review this. Um, I will include a link to the Secretary of State's website for more information. I will also include a link I went ahead and put this information and more in the form of an ebook called Alabama's Absentee Affidavit so that notaries um, will have access to this information and in sample forms um, right on their phone, especially if they um, are Kindle book readers. So you'll have it at your fingertips when you're at the signing table. It is not in paperback form yet. I'm going to try my best to get it, make it available um, as soon as possible. If you have more questions about the absentee ballot in voting, I encourage you really to reach out to the right individuals. Uh, Alabama's absentee election managers, there's one for every county um, or someone else at your county elections office. Um, but if you have a notary specific question regarding the process, definitely um, please add it in the comments and I'll do my best to answer your questions. So that was one thing that I wanted to talk about I um, also wanted to, am I ready to talk about the breakup? Yeah, let me go ahead and talk about my breakup this week. Um, that way we, we don't end on a sad note. Um, yeah, I broke up with someone this week. And like any breakup, it had me in my feelings earlier today. Um, now, if I'm being completely honest, the break, well, the breakup, it wasn't with a man. It wasn't with a pet. It wasn't with my employer. But it still hurt. It still hurt. My breakup happened today. I have been thinking about it for months, um, but I just couldn't follow through on it. I broke up with the UPS store today. Now, hear me out, because it's more serious than you think. I have been a mailbox holder at two different UPS stores since 2012 or 2013, I think 2012. Started in Birmingham, Alabama when I was living there, Jefferson County. 
And then when I moved to Madison County, I started a new relationship with um, one of the stores here. Now, if you're a small business owner, I think you're going to understand how hard this is. Now, I'm not, you don't have to enter into a relationship with the UPS store if you're a notary, but those of us who are small business owners really don't like putting our home address on everything. And when years ago, it was not uncommon to get a lot of mail. I was also a process server at that time, and it was not uncommon for uh, people who hired me to serve court documents to mail documents to me. So again, this provided me with a business mailing address um, that wasn't my home address. And it provided a more street address instead of a P.O. box. And that made at the time Google happy so that I could list my business on Google business listing. So it just, so it was great. It was great getting to know the store owners and employees. It was great because even though they employ notaries, there are documents that certain stores will not do. And I got a lot of referral work from the UPS stores. So that was good. I also had the opportunity to help train UPS store notaries. That was um, a nice, a wonderful experience. And I stay in touch with many of them to this day. Um, but because of where I live now, it is no, I don't live anywhere near a UPS store. So going to get mail was always out of my way. And once I got there, there was very little, if any, mail. And so finally I said, Michelle, as a business owner, um, it, this no longer makes sense for me to do. Um, I want to add that I did find out, in, at least in Madison County, that certain post offices do allow box holders to receive FedEx and UPS overnight mail, priority mail at the post office box. So um, that was not the case years ago, which was another reason why I went to the UPS store direction. Um, but yeah, um, just lots of perks um, associated with being a UPS store box holder. Um, I would meet clients there occasionally. I try not to take advantage of that. And then whenever I needed to do mail documents for APA Steelwork, it was very convenient to do that. And so if you are a notary business owner, I would encourage you to go to a nearby UPS store, talk with them about the advantages of having getting your business mail there. All right. Um, two more things and then I'll wrap it up. Those of you who do general notary work, you're going to find that it is cyclical. It is also seasonal, similar to those of you who are notary signing agents. You know that the last couple weeks of the month is when you are most busy. Well, there is a pattern even to general notary work. And I was reminded of that this week. My phone, I do not do signing agent work. Um, that is just a personal choice. I did it for many years and I don't enjoy it the way that I do general notary work. And so um, I stopped doing that years ago. Um, when the snap docs 
text messages took off. Um, it just didn't interest me the way it used to. But we're going into um, a couple seasons I want to talk about. One, the marriage season. And every notary should be familiar with the Alabama Marriage Certificate. Um, a lot of folks are getting married right now, and you'll be getting requests to notarize that type of document. I want to encourage you, if you aren't familiar with it for, and you are running a notary business, it would behoove you to get familiar with it. There's a lot of great information, helpful information about this form provided by the state of Alabama the Department of Health. So just go to Alabama Department of Health's website and read up on it. If that's not enough information for you, I do host a webinar called Alabama Marriage Certificate Training for Notaries. I was about to say, I don't think I have anything scheduled on a schedule right now. Um, I need to check. I think I might have something scheduled that I may have forgotten about, but um, I will reschedule something for May. Um, and so keep a lookout on that. Um, just go to trainalabama.com, pick a date that works for you. That training will help you to understand how there is more to, more to that form than just notarizing signatures. If you want to, you can just be a notary with that form, or you can choose to offer other services, um, which, which is very interesting and um, can bring in some additional income. Um, also, we're in the season of um, individuals withdrawing monies from their IRAs, 401ks, retirement plans, and oftentimes those documents require a notary to be present. And so keep these things in mind, those of you who have websites and Google business listings, those of you who advertise, these are the things that you want to mention. You may be asked by a prospective customer if you have a medallion, if you are a medallion notary. If you don't know what that is, you're not a medallion notary. I'm not a medallion notary. Most of us are not. I'd say 99.9% .9 of commissioned notaries aren't medallion level. Medallion notaries have special training and licensing dealing with annuities and securities and is needed. I'm going to stop there. I don't want to share too much um, of people's business, but they need, if you get those requests, you can let them know they if they bank locally, refer them to their bank because their bank should have a medallion love a medallion notary. But if not, I know that Regions Bank. I hope Regions is still here um, in Alabama. I know that they employ them, so they will need to go to a financial institution or an investment office in order to get that, their signature signed on those papers. So, um, and then my last thing is remote notarization. I think that can take a whole session on its own. So you know what? I'm not going to jump into that this evening. I will save that for my next update because um, it's important. I am getting calls weekly from notaries from all over the state. So something has changed recently. 
Um, I don't know if it's just social media influencers or what, um, but uh, I think it's time for an update. I hope you found this rant to be helpful. Uh, again, if you have questions, post them below. I'm going to make a conscious effort to do better about responding to those questions. And then if there are topics that you would like for me to cover, I will. Lastly, I want to encourage you, if you are not already a member of my free Facebook group, please join. That's where I post a lot of information. It makes it easy for me versus responding to individual emails and phone calls. Join our Facebook group. It's called Notaries for Alabama Hangout. Come in, say hello, interact with about 1,500 other notaries or aspiring notaries from all over the state. Get your questions answered. See what other notaries are doing. Um, if you uh, The classes, when I'm hosting classes, you'll find them on trainalabama.com. Um, don't forget I mentioned the ebook. Um, Alabama's absentee affidavit. If you or someone you know or some organization you're familiar with, you feel would benefit from that, please check that out. That is available on Amazon and Kindle as an ebook for now. And you'll also find um, a book, I didn't write it down, called Getting Started as an Alabama Notary Public. And then I have a third book on Alabama's new notary law. So check those three out. Again, you can purchase them on Amazon. I'll put links below. And I look forward to talking with you again um, on my next rant. Have a great evening.